Chapter 9 Non Spoiler A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass. It's a tale as old as time The Beauty Who Fell in Love with the Beast. But is it though? In this chapter, we're going to explore the Beauty and the Beast theme found in Akotar, and fans of this tale will love Sarah J. Mass's spin on it. My name is Hanin. Turn the page. Welcome to another chapter of Between the Pages. My name is Hanin. And my name is Nesma. Okay, so a cord of thorns and roses. <laughs> Akotar. <laughs> Akotar. <laughs> Here we are, <laughs> finally, it has arrived, that <laughs> this chapter, we've been wanting to do this series for a very long time. I've been wanting to read you this series for ages. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have, we have come across this series in very different ways. I have started reading this, the first one, A Court of Thorns and Roses, with fear. <laughs> I tell, let me explain. <laughs> Because the lady over here, mm-hmm. Hanin, <laughs> yeah, me, <laughs> <laughs> she, <laughs> it starts out by her telling me about the series and how much she loves it. And she and my other mutual friend, Selma, they read uh, the series together, I think, at the same I read time. It, no, I read it with Selma for the second time and I'm reading with, with you for the third time. That's how much it is. I love it. <laughs> That's how serious it is, guys. So I, I started reading it, but I was always afraid to start reading it. I had, like, for a very long time, I made excuses. You know, like, I bought the first book just the first book and then I said no I can't start reading it I still don't have the second or the third part and then when I got the second and the third I traveled so I didn't take them with me I don't want anything to happen to them which could also be counted as an excuse (laughs) don't remind me (laughs) (laughs) and then when I returned from my traveling I we had some other things to read before we could (laughs) so it was prolonged it was very very prolonged and then when i finally started reading it i was so afraid that i wasn't going to like it (laughs) i don't know it's just the pressure that drives me insane like the enthusiasm of other people and how they love that book or something it's just it puts me off or it makes me get scared from that from that book I always think what if you don't like it what if you don't like it as much as they do then you know like then <laughs> then your friendship will suffer or something i don't know it's <laughs> weird logic <laughs> <laughs> it is it is <laughs> i mean i read everything everybody is crazy about not literally everybody i mean like yeah. my friends you know Loa. and my mood of course like things i read according to my mood actually mm-hmm. and I came across this uh, A Court of Thorns and Roses, the first book, um, when I was on a reading spree of The Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> I mean, the the film was coming up, and then I watched it in the cinemas, and I and I wanted more of, of Beauty and the Beast. So I started looking for novels that has the Beauty and the Beast theme, where like a girl gets plucked out of her life to live with a, with someone she doesn't like, and then they fall in love, and then he lets her go, and like this story so i'm the always line. yeah the storyline so when i read like i read many books actually i read haunted by megan spooner i read cruel beauty by rosamond hodge i read beastly by alex finn which was a movie yes uh, I, we watched that one together didn't we or no i watched i think i watched it with Salma. Yeah, maybe. No, it was Salma, I think. I watched it with my sister, so no, it wasn't no, you. No, no. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> and I watched, and I read the duology, oh, duology. <laughs> duology. Of uh, Winter Song and Shadow Song. I actually waited for Shadow Song to come out. Uh, by S.J. Jones. Which... By the way, when you told me that, I was very, very, very surprised because I didn't know that you were like on a on a spree of Beauty and the Beast. Like we watched Beauty and the Beast together, mm-hmm. the one acted by Emma Watson in yes, the cinemas, and, and we uh, went together. What, what's his name? 
Uh, Don't forget the beast. <laughs> oh my God, Dan, uh, Dan, Dan Stevens, Dan Stevens, Dan Stevens. Yes. yes, and I didn't know that you liked it that much. Beauty and the Beast is my favorite fairy tale. I mean, her, the protagonist is a reader. Come on, <laughs> <laughs> and she's brave, and she has like so many good qualities, and like I, I grew up wanting to be like Belle, you know. And no, by the way, while we're talking about the movie, the visual artist who made the beast is an Egyptian visual artist. His name is Muhammad Ali. Yes. No way. Yes. So now we have two people who worked with Disney, Mina Masoud and Muhammad Ali. <laughs> and A Court of Thorns and Roses is going to be adapted by Tempok Productions and Constantine Film. The script has already been written or is or the writer is writing it she's Rachel Hiron I think Ooh, okay yes. interesting yeah and I want to work on that movie so much <laughs> <laughs> like if anybody knows anybody tell them I'm here <laughs> hello, hello I want to do that yeah. <laughs> I want to work on the movie yeah <laughs> so much you have no idea Anyways, but so is it a movie or a TV show? Is no, it, a movie. How will the movie do the book justice? I don't know. It has to be at least three hours, like the Lord of the Rings. I don't know if it's less than three hours. You're disappointed. You're yes, gonna be disappointed. I know they're going not to cover it, or they're going to take a lot of the story, which is no. The story is very rich and it has its own world. Getting introduced to that world in itself is like yes. it takes time. Yeah. Anyway, Which brings us to like points that we wanted to address for the non-spoiler part of the book. Uh, we know there's like a lot of hype around A Court of Thorns and Roses. Like I meet a lot of people who have heard about the series and who want to read it, who are excited really? to read it. I haven't met them. You haven't? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> well, we went to Cherry Blossom, our bookstore mm-hmm. here in our area. The people I meet there, they're always like talking about A Court of Thorns and Roses, like, you know, the owner, mm. uh, Somaya, and her f- her best, her friend, I don't know her name, but no, she, she, think, yeah. she recommended A Court of Thorns and Roses to me the day I bought it. She told me, oh my god, you have to read it. And you like, have to read it! <laughs> and finally, you have, I'm so happy. And finally, ha, I have read it. <laughs> go higher with that note (laughs) cue the music (laughs) so we're here we're finally here i have read the first part but hanin has fun fact has already read the series but yeah i think we've already the whole series two times and this is the third time she's how hard it is (laughs) to hold back information yes in the non-spoiler and spoiler i mean why can't i spoil the next two books (laughs) (laughs) nope nope i'm (laughs) i'm like the boss here and i'm telling her not to spoil anything okay i have to even have to tell her not to spoil anything to me like behind the scenes (laughs) when we're not (laughs) recording (laughs) this is so hard you have no idea guys (laughs) so um Yes, what I wanted to say is that there are a lot of people who want to read A Court of Thorns and Roses. And we want to say that uh, if you're planning to, there's like a whole new world. A whole new world <laughs> <laughs> waiting for you. <laughs> like literally, there's just from... There, there's another language, right? No, there's no other language. It's just the way things are s- pronounced... And the yes, way they yes. are uh, spelled. I mean, our protagonist is Fera, Fera. which is like... Which yeah. is a... F- she's a female protagonist, which yeah. I love. I'm a fan of female protagonists. I mean, <laughs> I mean, literally all the books that I read are female protagonists, which is weird. I guess mine too. Even sometimes I read like for male authors who make yeah. their protagonist a female. Like, yeah. Uh, I mean, we were just, or something. I mean, we were just uh, reviewing some books together and you reminded me of Every Day. Remember Every Day? Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> Regardless of how I feel about that book, it's, it's, I, in, in my mind, the protagonist was always a male. Even though he or she or it, whatever, <laughs> woke up every day in a different body. Which is, but in my head, whenever I heard the person, like the, his, their voice in my mind, it was always a, a guy or yes, a person. Yes. So I guess there's one book where the protagonist is a guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I think if I look through my No, we my read books, The Maze Runner. 
for example. Right, yes. right. And yeah. looking for Alaska is always a ma- also a male, I think. It's a boy. Yeah. Not a... Yeah, it's a boy. I don't know, but that's besides the point. Yeah. Back to Feyre. So, in the book, uh, Sarah J. Maas let it slip that Feyre act- does actually mean beauty, so... You see? <laughs> Come, coming from the word fair. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Because when they used the word fair uh, in the olden times, the fair me- meant that she, she, she's beautiful. Mm-hmm. I remember that. Like in like literature or texts or anything, like yeah. fair means beauty. <laughs> You're fair, Nessa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you very much. <laughs> okay, so... So another thing that I wanted to talk about was the start of the book, like the feel of the book and the characters and getting introduced to the to the plot line and like trying to see their he- their their features or the way they look like in your head, you know when you're still getting used to it mm-hmm. and and you're still warming up. Yes. It took me a lot personally. I'm I don't know about other people, but it, for me personally, it took me a very long time to get attached to the characters hmm. i don't know why but there's something about the, the the beginning of the novel that was so intrusive immediately at the very beginning so i was like in the middle of a story already but i have no background whatsoever so i was like should i care about this character or should i not care about this character who hmm. is this Tanlun person? Why is he kidnapping her? And like this idea of like there's no purpose for me to care about this person and it took me a while to get attached to them. And but when, once I maybe did without spoiling <laughs> um it I think it's like once it started clicking between them a little once there was like conflict, you know, once hmm. it once her life was actually in danger uh, that's when I was like starting to care about her a little bit more. I was like, no way, I don't want you to go yet. I'm still not ready. I just <laughs> got used to you. Don't go now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know you're going to contradict, but go ahead. Yeah. I mean, tell me what you think. <laughs> I mean, it's different with me because I already connected with the character right away as beauty, you know? Yeah. As in, like, so I felt like or I already know Feyre. Though she's so much more than the Disney character we know and yeah. the other characters I read about that were em- an embodiment of beauty, I mean. But by the way, comparing this to Beauty and the Beast does not in any way belittle <laughs> the story. Like, of course not. Of course not. not. Like it's something else, but it's something. It's That's... something more actually with the Beauty and yes, the Beast. Yes, yes, definitely. Know? Uh, when you talk, this is actually like what I love about uh, Court of Thorns and Roses. Like you got to the series with a different background or with a different uh, intention, mm-hmm. and I started it with a different intention entirely from yours. So it's like it can like each and every person who grabs the series will see it in a different way. So if if Definitely. personally, if Hanin hadn't told me that this is uh, a a Beauty and the Beast theme, I wouldn't have, like, this information wouldn't have clicked in my mind until halfway through the novel. Like, there's one part in the novel that's very, very, like, more than half the novel, actually. Like Towards the end. Towards the end, to be honest. There's, like, this one scene or a couple, like, two chapters where it's just, like, it's so obvious that this is a Beauty and the Beast story. Ironically, this is when the story turns from Beauty and the Beast and becomes completely Complete something own. else. I mean, wow. That's what I love about A Court of Thorns and Roses. It carries a theme, but it still makes it own, makes its own uh, idea or its own dynamic to it. Yes. Like there's a sort of originality to it mm-hmm. than than following a traditional plot line. Like it takes its own world entirely. Like it's it's and mind it's blowing arc as well. I think it starts a completely new arc towards the the third yes. act. Like the the third act, what's which is supposed to be like resolution it's, yeah it yeah. takes a completely new arc it it gives like i feel like there are two climaxes in the yes. novel which is or not like a... there was the end of the regular beauty and the beast scene where he lets her go yes. and then that's where it stops and then exactly. there's the new arc i don't know yeah it's, i it's hope brilliant act i mean i don't think we spoiled anything i think yeah. we're just we're just if you're addressing thinking from the... that 
perspective. So yeah. think Beauty and the Beast until you go Court of Thrones and Roses. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be honest, I loved how it it took its own turn. You know, yes, definitely. she just had like she surprised me. Like yeah. I was in the Beauty and the Beast m- mood. mood, and then wow. Wow, I love this. Okay. <laughs> now I'm out. That was the last book I read in the Beauty and the Beast spree that I was on. Surprising. Like, I just read that and then continued the rest of the series. And so khala- I was done. Yes. So, khalas, you're khalas, khalas, khalas. I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> it's like an bitch. She took me out of it. <laughs> and I'm glad, actually. <laughs> Well, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> she gave you the last touch, kid, and uh, you were done. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I read Court of Thorns and Roses, enough Beauty and the Beast for the rest of my life. <laughs> now the rest and the rest is, I tell you. <laughs> no, I won't, actually. <laughs> well, oh, I can't. <laughs> aw. To the series, we have uh, Court of Thorns and Roses, A Court of Mist and Fury, and... A Court of Wings and Ruin. Yes, and plus then there's... Plus a little book, A Court of Frost and Starlight. Yeah, and there's another one coming out, isn't it? Yeah, another three, actually. Three? Oh yeah. my god! She's going to do this thing like Shatter Me where we get another... Three? Yeah. What the hell? <laughs> Why? Names aren't... Titles aren't announced yet. She's actually working on a completely new... She finished her uh first series with a court of frost and starlight i think and then she started a new one like there is another book out of a new of a complete new series oh my god this woman is on fire yeah i love her she's amazing (laughs) how old is she again i think in her early 20s or mid 20s wow i'm so proud of her (laughs) yeah i wish i could be like her more productive (laughs) But I'm not. I mean, I'm here productive with the podcast, so that yeah. counts for something. No, with your writing, Nisma, come on. I want to read your stories in a published form. In format. a published form. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, maybe soon. <laughs> so the very last thing that we wanted to address, which I personally like about this uh, series, is that we're going to be introduced to a new love triangle. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> I'm not sure about that, but okay. I mean, come on. Come on. <laughs> okay, but you already know too much. So yes, that's and I the can't, problem. like, if I comment, I will direct you in a certain direction. And if I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Yes, there is a love triangle, but. Don't say anything. <laughs> Oh my god, don't say anything. This is I just torture. <laughs> <laughs> what am I going to do in this spoiling episode? I <laughs> if mean, I can talk. I mean, to be honest, I'm a fan of um Damon and Stefan and Elena and we had the Twilight uh, love triangle and we have a love triangle and Shatter Me, mm-hmm. but I feel like in A Court of Thorns and Roses the love triangle is going to be completely different. It's going to be something new. Don't say anything, Hanin. I'm talking to the listeners, not to you. <laughs> you comment on her. <laughs> I'm not saying anything. And if you're, you are in my position, please help. help. <laughs> Send help. <laughs> I am dying. <laughs> okay, I think we have said enough for the podcast. Yes, this is, for this chapter. Yeah, for this chapter. Um, go ahead and listen to the spoiler episode where Hanin will c- be continuing to die, but I will have all the fun. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> I will have all the fun to myself. <laughs> Thank you for making it to the end of this chapter. We cannot stress enough how life-changing this series is going to be for you. For us, this story has a very special place in our hearts and we highly recommend you read it. Let us know what you think about this novel on our Facebook page Between the Pages podcast. Once you've read the book, or if you already have, move on to our spoiler episode where we talk all things related to A Court of Thorns and Roses and its plot. My name is Nesma. Turn the page.